So this is a topic that's honestly been a long time coming for me. It's something that's bothered me for years, but I never really sat down to talk about it. But I feel like today is a good day to do it because of an instance that happened on Saturday night on our latest episode of the Spawncast. Now, we, of course, were talking about video games, and three of us had played the brand new RoboCop Rogue City game. And all three of us really enjoyed our time with it, thought it was a really fun game a breath of fresh air with some good shooting mechanics some interesting destructible environments and stuff and just a lot of fan service to make a very enjoyable game but one member of the podcast who hadn't played the game couldn't really understand the disconnect between what we were saying and what metacritic was saying because metacritic has this game at a 70 so how can it be good how can it be fun how can the three of us be having fun yet all these other people aren't having fun with it and that got me thinking about metacritic in general because while metacritic at its core is not a bad idea i feel like the implementation and the reliance on it especially in modern video games has just gone way too far it has become ridiculous how prominent metacritic is for people and how it's like of biblical or constitutional nature and what they say goes and it's time to talk about metacritic and why While it's fine as a point of resource, it shouldn't be the be-all, end-all for games. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. If anything, I I see this reliance on Metacritic becoming more and more important. So, of course, what is Metacritic? At the end of the day, it is a conglomeration of various websites and social media personalities who review games. And then from this, they take their review scores for a certain game and implement it into their database, thus giving the game an overall Metacritic score. So if you have, you know, four reviews and there's there's there has to be four reviews on a game for it to be entered into the database if you have four reviews and they're all tens well looky there you've made the perfect game of the year but of course bigger games are going to have more people reviewing them and when you start to talk about reviews and the review process and stuff that's where things get kind of murky because While some companies heavily rely on Metacritic scores, you might remember a couple of years ago there was a story about how Sony cared more about Metacritic scores than sales. This, of course, was involving Days Gone. And when you look at this story from 2021, uh, the director of Days Gone said that Metacritic score is everything to Sony. They go on to say some things here. I believe this was an interview done with uh, David Jaffe. And basically, just putting a strong emphasis on the fact that Sony cares more about the Metacritic. I took it hard, to be honest, because again, this is just the reality of Sony. Metacritic scores everything. If you're the creative director on a franchise and your game is coming out to a 70, you're not going to be the creative director on that franchise very long. To me, like, yeah, there are games out there that are hits. There are games out there that are misses. But it really shouldn't come down to a you know arbitrary score that is given to you by reviewers if the game still sells well people tend to buy crap i mean when you look at the pokemon franchise if you know the pokemon company went in this direction game freak would be removed off of these projects because of the fact that you know scarlet and violet were so low on the metacritic overall score but the game still sold really well A heavy reliance on Metacritic just means you're wanting mass appeal to a certain dichotomy of people who review the games. And of course, you have to talk about the review process itself, because that's a whole other story in and of itself. If you're unaware of this, before I got into the YouTube sphere, I was a writer for various websites. I ended up becoming the editor-in-chief over at Nintendo Enthusiast. But before that, when I would submit my reviews, because we were actually on Metacritic, an editor-in-chief would look over that review and then decide whether or not the score given was indicative of the word spoken. And I actually really like that because to me, review scores are completely pointless. You know, it's you're celebrating an arbitrary number given to you by an individual when in reality, it should be the words or the content within itself that tells you whether or not this is a game that you will enjoy. But of course, the score has to match the words. If you sit there dogging on a game and saying that it has fundamental problems, but you're like, oh, you know, it's still a 9.5 out of 10, then you're not really doing your job as a reviewer who has an impact and it's a big impact that shouldn't be that big and then of course you have to talk about reviewers 
on Metacritic because this is a closed door policy. How you get on Metacritic is you try to submit and get on their website, but not everybody gets in. So it's almost like an elitist club. And I'm not trying to downplay or disparage people who are on Metacritic. They obviously put in some work in order to be there. But the fact that it's not quite as an open door policy as it probably should be, and you know, I know there's open critic as well, but still there are uh, sort of yellow tape that you got to pass with uh, open critic as well it definitely becomes very murky because when you look at how reviewers review stuff i mean there's so much stuff that goes into these reviews nowadays and it, it's ridiculous it's not necessarily about the video game or the quality of the video game or the the fun experience that you had with it because you have stuff like personal biases you have things like personal agendas that people are trying to push you of course have dislikes for a certain genre but you still review the game with this power of you being on metacritic you need to strip away all your personal biases you know if you hate harry potter don't review harry potter because you're not doing justice to the game itself you're using your preconceived notions that you have of the harry potter franchise and the creator of harry potter that you know okay you're allowed to feel that way but that shouldn't impact the game itself and that game ended up seeing some really low review scores because of personal bias i have to mention jim sterling into this conversation with the jimquisition because he is noticeably always involved in these sort of things where he re sometimes will review a game that's not very good and say it's a masterpiece like deadly premonition but then you have games that are well received uh by fans of the genre and fans of the game and fans of the franchises that end up getting super low scores it's almost like being edgy just to be edgy and i have no problems with the jimquisition or anything like that but still the whole point of this is they are on metacritic so their score can take a game from a 90 to an 87 or something like that especially if it's a game that doesn't get you know 50 plus reviews if this is a smaller game a game that only gets 10 or 15 reviews one score that's implicated with a personal bias or a personal agenda whatever that agenda may be it can impact the game in a super negative way it can impact the livelihood of creation teams it can impact the livelihood of game directors because we just saw that with sony with with days gone they didn't care that the game sold pretty decently they cared about that metacritic score so what do we do about this you know metacritic has become this behemoth and even when you're talking about game of the year stuff nowadays people bring up the metacritic score of the game to be like oh well you know this this can't be in the conversation because it doesn't have a high enough score but you're going to tell me that an Xbox specific website reviewing a PlayStation game and getting on Metacritic is a smart thing or an Xbox website reviewing an Xbox video game and giving it a high score that that's a there's no bias behind that. There's no sort of thing behind it. Like my I don't it's not about the websites and it's not necessarily about the people. It's about the reliance on Metacritic as this be all end all. You know, this is this is the law. And if you don't if you if you think the Metacritic is too low or too high, well you're an idiot because Metacritic is the be all end all. And I hate that because that's that's you know, reviews are there to inform people about games so that people themselves can make a choice on whether to play the game or not based on what they hear based on what they read based on what they see but when that starts to become polluted by biases and agendas and you know numbers because of the fact that this game doesn't have a high enough number like i reviewed games and loved them that were you know 70s on metacritic i don't care i don't care about what metacritic says Metacritic is a conglomerate of people that aren't really my peers. I don't really like games journalists to begin with. Most of them don't like me, and that's fine. We stay in our own lanes. But I don't care about a Metacritic score when making a review for one of my games. I might check it out. I might do a video looking at some of the highest uh, reviews and the low-end reviews to kind of find some common middle ground there. But as long as the words match the score, none of that matters. And so does the score really matter? does metacritic really matter should we be putting all of this stock into metacritic and praising it as the greatest thing and if your metacritic score sucks your game sucks you see how that's you see how that's not really it's not really a good thing to do that's not really a a good rock to lay your head upon 
I don't know. Maybe I'm rambling. Maybe I went all over the place with this. Uh, but these are just my thoughts on it. You know, I think Metacritic has way too much power and it has way too much influence in video games because our company is making games that they want to make or are they making games for Metacritic scores? Are people reviewing games because of how they feel or are they reviewing it because they don't want to give a game too high or too low of a Metacritic score? These are things you have to take into account. And I just wanted to bring it to your guys' attention because I feel like this is a discussion where Metacritic just has way too much power. And I don't like it, man. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's ridiculous. So let me know in the comment section down below. Am I just a crazy person? Is Metacritic great? And I'm just an idiot. Or do you think that this, this whole Metacritic structure just has way too much power? And don't even get me started. I know people will say, well, what about paid reviews? Because Rotten Tomatoes was exposed for that. I really don't think it's that prominent in, in video games as much as it is with movies. But that's another thing that needs to kind of be in the back of your mind, I guess. You know, we haven't had any concrete evidence of that thus far. But you do have to feel like maybe that is something that's happening. And that's something that we might not ever hear about unless there's a whistleblower. But then people just be like, oh, he's crazy. He doesn't, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And as always, guys, thank you for joining me on this little venting session on Metacritic. If you agree with me, hit the subscribe button. If you disagree with me, hit the subscribe button. Like the video, dislike the video. I don't care. Just interact with the video. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.